Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper and Corner. We have I Love XTO starting as the blue Terran bottom left and corner. We have white starting as the white Protoss. This is BSL Season 14 Hostile League Group C. These players, so question from chat is, what is the average rank of Hostile League players? I think they're like low to, they go from like mid B to like low A to mid A. I'm not sure that... I think Machine has been S on occasion, and he won Hasu League last season. But he tends to be high A. I don't think any of these guys... I think the lowest I've seen is high B out of a lot, out of some of these guys. I think White is kind of like a mid... A solid low mid A player. I don't have exact MMR for a lot of the guys. I wish I did, actually. That would be a great stat to eventually get. But familiar faces here, and I love XTO and White. I don't have... I only have two replays from this grouping. So we'll see how they play out. I didn't look at the map ahead of time. Shame on me. Looks like we're on Vermeer again. Should be a solid one. Hasu League going much more rapidly this time because of lack of replays, a lot of withdraws. So we're going to have a very quick move into the round of eight. I also want to give the shout out to the straight up BSL Pro League. If you want to see guys that are in the A and S range, really the best of the best that aren't doing this professionally. And what I mean by that, they aren't paid full time to do it. I'm hoping one day they will be. And honestly, I, that's kind of the difference. So you got the Koreans who are the professionals and have the infrastructure. But honestly, I feel like if we could get to that stage, I have no doubt in my mind that guys like DeWalt, that guys like Zeki, Given the full-time practice and given some infrastructure around them to make it happening, to make it happen, could take on the Koreans and could just show some absolutely incredible matches. Right now, Bonneth has already been filmed on his stream multiple times beating Koreans and beating pros and ex-pros. And he just, he's an incredible player. Although a lot of people favoring DeWalt potentially to win this season, I'm favoring Jeonhoon. I think he's the guy to beat this uh, still at this stage. But yeah, that's kind of my dream is that one day there would be funding, that Brood War would surge slowly in popularity and establish itself as one of the main esports out in the world. That is why I'm here. It is my passion. One gate robotics facility for white. Checking on building. We'll have to see, though. Bunker plopping down on the front for XTO. He's already gotten his natural expansion up and running. Actually doing that before factory. Still hasn't gotten a scout in his opponent's base, and he's going to have to face a Dragoon, so probably not going to get any scouting information. I'm actually kind of curious. This has actually been on my mind. For a long period of time, this is like how to increase viewership of Brood War, or increase interest. And it's kind of a chicken egg problem, because part of it is is that there's just, I feel like there needs to be more fun modes that are just a little bit more relaxing and not quite so intense as ladder, for the general populace to kind of play the game and kind of appreciate. Because I think a lot of people who played the single player, who played like the game hunters or whatever UMS maps, they appreciate the one v one play. But it kind of makes me think of League of Legends where they have, you know, you have normals in League of Legends and you have, uh, what is it, the um, all-mid sort of gameplay. A little bit fun, but then you have the professionals who are playing hyper-serious, right? But that still creates that viewer base. And there's That's the interesting thing about Brood War compared to a lot of other esports that I've run across, is there are people who just watch Brood War, like me at the moment. Like, I just don't have the time to dedicate the time or the extra space and stress to dedicate to Brood War. And I'm almost curious if it could emulate how Korea did it. I think part of it is, is Korea just had the perfect convergence of a lot of things, where this was the most popular game in Korea. So we kind of missed that end, but end of things. But what Koreans would do is, is they would have like tournaments in the middle of malls, in the middle of uh, middle of crowded areas and things like that. But it's something I've thought about. But back to the game. Siege Tech 
upgrading single factory XTO going ahead and respecting the Dark Templar play. Putting turret on the front. We already see a Reaver. Range was skipped to get that Reaver out more rapidly for White. He's grabbing that Nexus, but this is going to put him economically behind, which means... Without shuttle speed, he does need to get some economic damage done here. Forward engineering bay up for XTO. Yeah, malls are kind of dead. Maybe college campuses would be the place to do it these days, or... Where do the kids hang out? Feels like the internet's taken over everything. With COVID, it feels like a lot of stuff was locked down, and there just isn't, like, a big public... square these days. Someone needs to, I guess we need to reestablish that. So the Brood War community, first thing we're going to do is revitalize and having like social grouping locations. Then we're going to run tournaments there once we've established that. How about that? Turret's not up for XTO. So Reaver able to get into the interior lines. Dud though on the turret building SCV to that right hand corner. Dragoon's now being funneled up. So XTO very much in breach. He does have two siege tanks. One shot on the Reaver. The Reaver being focused fired by the Marines. Actually being... This is such a brave SCV. Attacking there. SCV's pulling off the line. And XTO currently in breach. Another turret down. Three Dragoons. Not a lot of reinforcements. Additional siege tanks and vultures being built in an emergency. But XTO taking significant economic damage here. Which is needed. Reaver backing out to that corner. Finally wiped out. And the last Dragoon getting splorched. SCV's backing him out into the corner. I don't know that he's going to be able to get Hero Marine getting the last kill there. However, at the end of the day, XTO lost a lot of mine time, lost a lot of SCVs, which gives a little bit of breathing room. But White's still significantly behind in the overall worker count. Getting another Reaver up as four gateways up and running. And after that follow-up, considering how small the troop count is potentially for white, I might think about just going for additional expansion. It looks like an additional machine shop tacking down for XTO. Is he thinking about getting aggressive after that initial attack? Might feel like there was enough damage done where he needs to get something accomplished. Attacking his own barracks for being there. It looks like he does want to go ahead and get a group up and potentially fight this. White is, in fact, moving out to go ahead and grab a third. But XTO potentially does have an overwhelming amount of troops to go ahead and fight this. Because keep in mind, there's no... I was going to say there's no Shuttle and Reaver, but there's the Shuttle and Reaver moving out. This is something that could absolutely stymie this attack. XTO flooding troops everywhere, all over the map. And grabbing his third. Reaver floating above all of this. Yeah, making the end around. Third base is plopped down at... White does have the option to go ahead and cancel that. Reaver taking some pot shots at Vultures. And after a weird scatter of troops everywhere, it looks like they're going to try to regroup here along the 6 o'clock spoke. And XTO, is he going to proxy something? He's got an SCV nearby. Maybe to create a threat. White with plenty of troops. But XTO... If he reinforces this point, is to hop, skip, and a jump away from a threat of the natural expansion. White barreling forward a little bit to get some mine clearage. Third base is going to come online. XTO's threat currently a little bit empty. More vultures wandering out. They could... This is a very exposed third base, so they could sneak by. I'm very curious about this SCV. Proxy turret would be entertaining. Fifth factory being added on. Army's there, but no cycle of plus one weapons yet. Observer is able to keep an eye on the reinforcements along that spoke. XTO doing a great job, though, of macroing. And one thing we've seen in previous matches is XTO... And this is my other curiosity with this SCV. In previous matches, we have seen him sneak command centers just all over the map to beat out opponents. In fact, he might have done that against White last season. So this could be potentially a grudge match. Base up, Dragoons. Very, I like this. White being very cautious. Moving the Dragoons up. 
as soon as the probes were in position. However, that's an overwhelming amount of vultures just pressing in. Reaver trying to get here so he can get some splash damage to clear them up a little bit more rapidly. I think that was two or three probe kills. But a decent defense there by White, finally grabbing his second gas. Has three bases up, but XTO has his 12 o'clock base up. And when it is even on bases, that usually is a Protoss advantage. Six factory being added on. Plus one weapons on the way. XTO close on supply. White looking to Zealot Bomb to clear out these troops. Almost getting a siege tank for his efforts. More Zealots grouping up for more Zealot Bombs. Nice mind drag into the siege tank. Second Zealot is going to be able to clear that up. The Vulture's there to go ahead and wipe out... <laughs> Poor Marine. You just sit there, a Zealot all of a sudden is dropped. Just flumps down next to you and siege tanks nail you. Just shows you how much... Tanks care about Terran lives. Like, we were, shoot we're shooting at Terrans one-third of the time anyway. Templar Archives up. Has been scanned. I don't see any movements towards Stargate, though, so it looks like it is just going to be pure gateway, man. And that might be hard to pull off, considering the economic advantage is in XTO's favor. Three machine shops down to produce a lot of tanks. Six factories overall. Southern Spoke still being hold, held. Zealots wandering through. It looks like they want to make some disruption here at the 12 o'clock. There are two siege tanks here. Zealots on the low ground. Two of them able to get through. Vulture is going to go ahead. Well, sorry. Three Zealots making it out. Decent defense and cleanup from XTO. Really not suffering any economic damage. And White, yeah, behind on the worker count. Behind in bases. XTO ahead in supply, which is stereotypically not what you want to see as a Protoss player. Tanks and Vultures streaming across to go ahead and pressure the third base. Cannon warping in. XTO applying the pressure, establishing a turret line, even if there were Arbiters here, which there are not. Potentially to deal with that, also potentially to go ahead and deal with that shuttle threat. And I don't know that we're gonna see Arbiters, but we haven't seen a second Robo either. There has been a shift in the metal to go more Vulture heavy, or sorry, more shuttle heavy. Vulture is able to sneak up in there and kill all sorts of units. The Dragoon's trying to sneak in from behind. Dark Templar getting annihilated as turrets were already there. A lot of Dragoons going into a grouped up tank position. But White losing a lot of units here as he is forced into a funnel of XTO. Yeah, it looks like he's going to back up. Impossible calling GG right there. Impossible indeed. XTO takes the win. Great play from XTO, and he looks even sharper than last season. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.